committee members uh, uh, and Debbie. And uh, let's see, and there's Quinn, great. So that's four and uh, we'll just wait for Quinn to finish getting on and then we'll call it good and give a start. There he is. Hello. And looking very summery. Uh, the hat, the t-shirt, that's awesome. It is hot outside, so. Well, I just, I, I'm in uh, Wayne County, so I just finished a trail run and it exhausted me. Ah, and uh, um, okay. Well, congratulations on your trail run on a very hot day. It must be hot down there too. It's about 88. Yeah, <laughs> that's way too hot. Uh, welcome, Sarah, and welcome, Sam. Happy to see you again. Um, and uh, Debbie, so nice to have everyone with us. So yeah, so go ahead and start recording. Maybe you already did, Matt. We're all ready to go. Okay. <laughs> um, so welcome to the Natural Resources Stewardship Committee uh, meeting for May. And uh, our first agenda item, and, and welcome to Hillary's uh, lap sitter. That's awesome. <laughs> our first agenda item is uh, Parks Department presentation on trails, but uh, we didn't quite uh, get on their agenda uh, in, in a, enough time. So they sadly are not with us. Um, but Matt, you have a small update for us on this? Yeah. Um... So the uh, the man so the park and recreation master plan will consider non both open space needs park needs and trail needs. Uh, our consultant's been retained, and um, the one of our city management team is is sort of working on this directly rather than the parks department. Um, this is not uh, ready for discussion yet. They were invited, but. Um, They've been distracted with a couple other projects, namely one being Hillcrest Park. Um, the same consultant um, being used for the master plan study. It's the same consultant they're using for some design work on Hillcrest Park. And so they really haven't got too much into the actual parks master plan process yet. Um, and that's about what I can tell you. Um, I would say suspect uh, well they they said they could be here next month and i suspect what they're going to tell you is basically sort of the outline of how they think the process is going to go and maybe at what point you can provide some feedback and input on that plan thank you i appreciate that uh that's that's just fine um we, uh, you know, we were first alerted to the possibility of thinking more about trails by the mayor in our annual report where he said, hey, you know, I'd like to do more trails. And, um, and he mentioned a bill that had been passed by the state legislature that provided some money for that. And I looked into the bill and it wasn't quite clear yet. So one of the things I need to do is circle back around and see, I guess, if, because uh, I checked with Brandon Stocksdale uh, who does a lot of outreach work from the National Park Service with communities on these kinds of issues. And, and as I recall, he wasn't quite sure what was available by way of the bill or what the intentions were. Um, uh, do you know Brandon at all, Matt? Brandon Stocksdale? I, I am familiar with his name and his long tenure at Orem City, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He I, was, I do uh, not yeah. personally. Yeah, he was your predecessor, you know, like two people ago. Yeah, yeah anyway, I know him. He's he's really good. He'll be helpful when he gets information. He's good. Um, yeah. You know, and if this funding, if, and again, I, I probably need to look into it too, but if this funding is time sensitive, we do have a current master plan. Now, is it the most up, to, you know, and, and it's not that old. I think it was done in 2016. So we're not dealing with a 20-year plan. So, I mean... If the, I would suspect the funding would want to tie into master planning for the city, usually these type of grants or funding sources like to point back to policy documents. And so, if this, um, if we, if we need, if there is a need to apply for this money before this master plan update is finished, there's already a foundation of work to draw on. I think. Okay, great. 
It sounds like maybe the next step is for me to circle back around with Brandon and see if there's more information yet on this funding that the mayor made us available of. Um, yeah, you don't know anything further about that then, right, Matt? Oh, he got, okay. Do you remember the house bill number? <laughs> uh, it's, it's somewhere in my notes here, somewhere. Uh, 433. All right. Um, you know, I'll see what I can find out. Well, whatever. I can ask Brandon. He well, I think you should. I think if Brandon's plugged into that. But um, yeah. I'll, I'll I just a little bit as well. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, I just didn't want to make I just want to make sure I wasn't duplicating something you already knew. But um, no, um, it, I'd need to read the bill before I could speak intelligently on it. OK, <laughs> Well, my guess is Brandon would know it as well as anyone since he, he uh, this is kind of his thing. He helps local communities with trails. So I will, I will circle back around with him again. Um, Darren, can I ask one question? Yeah. This is for Matt. Um, uh, your prediction of what the folks will t tell us next month is probably right, I'm guessing. But uh, you may, or you might already have an intuition about the ways in which we could be most helpful, or where we could be plugged into the process. Do you have any ideas as to what role we might be able to productively play? So what I would suggest, and I can, is probably uh, you could probably get a a jump on the game by looking at the current master plan, and I can send out a link to that. Uh, in fact, I'll do that while you guys discuss other items. Um, and you can review that because that'll be the foundation of the update for this plan. Uh, I would suspect 90% of the foundational work would remain the same and that they will maybe modify a few existing goals and then add on to it um, based off, you know, new community goals or where the direct city, you know, sometimes they've implemented a few things to so say like take off those things off, off the plan. Um, so, uh, so the first thing I would suggest is look at the current master plan, get familiar with it, and then, um, and then just when there's an opportunity, um, you know, provide written feedback. Sometimes it's a little more helpful than just comments in a meeting or an update. So. Hey, um, just another question, Matt. So, uh, who is responsible for implementing that plan? Is that pretty much the whole city it's or is there kind of a point person is that you no it's not me um, um it's probably Bryn Bybee who is the um one of the city administrators he's kind of over arts and parks so he's probably the point person if you want to talk to Bryn yeah Bryn is the one the project lead um on the update uh, I'm sure he works closely with the Parks Department team to work on the implementation measures. Um, you know, every city sort of does it differently, but um, yeah, I think um, the planning team in the past has had a smaller role in this um, master uh, Parks and Rec master plan. Um, I think okay. we could have a bigger role in it, but... Um, uh, up to this point, we haven't been invited. Uh -huh. And is Bren the person who would be invited to our meeting next month? Yes. Okay, great. Perfect. I mean, just, um, you know, I follow uh, on social media, I follow lots of people interested in trails, bike trails in particular. And, and um, you know, there's always rumblings on social media about how Orem is worse than other nearby communities. And uh, I'm sorry if that's not deserved, um, and maybe that's just misinformation, but um, it makes me wonder um, what that means. <laughs> and uh, I, I wonder if there's a way we can improve either our reputation or the substance. Um, yeah, I think um, a good opportunity to get to get to the bottom of that would be through this process and the um, invite these people on social media to the public portions of this up you know whatever neighborhood or community-wide meetings um, but again I don't want the calendar and the timeline for that is yet so that's that's okay. friends court can I make a comment um, 
when we did all these neighborhood plans around Orem, um, if a neighborhood talked about sidewalks and trails and right, then those became the actual, some of the, the goals related to those items. And so um, those items have been translated into, I'm getting on a list of things to complete, exactly where those items are. Depends on, of course, money and, um, but we're going through the budget process right now. If there's anything, we'd have to hurry because we adopt budgets soon, but it could be a budget item for next year, as well as knowing that we are getting some COVID money from the gov federal government and we're not exactly sure what the stipulations would be, but maybe perhaps outdoor activities because of COVID, you know, being socially distanced might qualify. I don't know yet. I haven't seen them. So just keep that in mind. If we get, if we get some sort of leeway that we can use COVID funds, um, there might be a way to finish off something um, irrespective of the city's budget. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Check your neighborhood plan. If they've got a, a, a trail or something they want to finish, those will have become part of the city's overall, um, I call it capital improvement projects, CIPs. That's an excellent point. And, you know, sometimes when these plans are made, these are, these are multi-year plans. So, you know, the budgeting can be five to 20 years, depending on the scale and scope and difficulty of the project. But they do, they do go up higher when you get, res and I'm going to say this, responsible people who come in with responsible ideas and um, requests, because it does help bump it up. Um, I'm saying that, I mean, keep the emotion reasonable and, and make a good factual argument. And those factual arguments help to increase it up. And, and like I said, there's some unique circumstances this year. So any when citizens engage with us, if you're respectful, kind, have good, good ideas, we want to have this warm be a great place to live and work. So, but we just don't need the frenzy. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I totally hear you. I totally agree. Um, and uh, and uh, thank you, both Debbie and Matt. Those were excellent points about how to get involved and, and how to think about this. And again, I don't speak from a lot of knowledge because I'm not much of a biker or trail runner myself, at least in urban areas. <laughs> I'm all about the mountain trails. I just, I just, uh, I, I hear some things and I, I heard the mayor say that, hey, he wants to work on trails. And so I thought, wow, this is, this seems like a nice opportunity to, to, to do something. So um, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, just uh, FYI, there, there is a member, there's an ex member of our committee. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Sarah, um, David Staub, is that his name? He, he's been biking every single street in Orem, and he's been posting it on Facebook and his evaluation of each and every street, and he just completed it yesterday. And, uh, and they're talking about um, doing, a, you know, a Daily Herald piece on this, on his findings, and uh, anyway, he, uh, so there's some people out there with some real knowledge <laughs> about, about these situations. Um, okay. And what I would say to something like that, someone like that who's, who's doing, has done it, evaluated it, would be a very valuable asset. But don't come in negative with us saying we're crap. Right. Just say, these are the areas we can improve. These are the places we could, we could put a little money. That kind of stuff is invaluable. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's the approach we, we would want to take um, and be cooperative for sure. So thank you. Okay. That was a, any, any other points along these lines of uh, trails? Okay, the second item on our agenda is a council work meeting debrief. Uh, there's a natural segue here because we've been talking about the best work with the council and we had that opportunity recently. I was not able to attend, but Quinn, you took the lead and Sarah was there as well. So uh, would you like to help us understand what happened, Quinn, and um, what some next steps might look like? Well, sure, uh, Debbie, it might make sense for you to start uh, since you were there as well. Um, 
I, well, I, I would say it was a very good presentation. Um, we only heard from Tom, me, and the mayor. It looked like the mayor had changed his mind on it. I was always supportive and Tom had switched. So I really couldn't gauge. Um, you, can, you need four to really, you know, do anything effectively. Um, so, uh, you know, two. So I, I would say that we'd have to drill down and see if, the, if we, there's two other council that are interested in doing. I, I'm, I'm assuming Jeff might have some interest because you guys have educated him. And, um, and Brent and Terry, it's, I, I don't know how to read them at this point, but your presentation was excellent. I, I know I appreciated the update. Um, what, what was your imp impression of Jamie's uh, intervention? Remind me what he said. So when the mayor basically said that he would recommend that we... Uh, oh, he talked about Rocky Mountain Power, right. I think, um, I think he said two things that I remembered, Debbie. One is that he said that uh, why don't we just do this on our own? Um, and... Uh, and I think the other thing was that Rocky Mountain Power was having some initiatives that we would just connect in with them. Um, well, he mentioned that Rocky Mountain Power was gradually changing their mix over time, right, to be be more renewables. And I, you know, I think that my response to that was that that's going to be quite a long period of time. Yeah, and you know, Jamie's looking at it from the overall city and and costs and things like that. And was it ninety one thousand? Am I mem remembering that over? Three years. It was it was two years of, a of thirty-one, and then there was the noticing fee, which we thought would be about twenty-seven. Yeah, um, I think Jamie's just trying to be realistic about that, and and if it makes sense to push forward with it, or does it make sense to let um, commerce or businesses, whatever you want to call it, you know, fill the gap? So I don't know if there's a hybrid way of doing it. Um, now, from your perspective, Debbie, would it make sense for us to have a conversation with Jamie? Because it, it seemed like he was the one that was had the most concerns. Um, oh, have, for uh, sure. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie would be good to meet with him. Um, obviously, we direct him, but he also is the CEO of our city. So, yes, it would be good to, to talk with Jamie. And it would also be good to see what Rocky Mountain is doing and see where they're at. I mean, I think it, it's a reasonable comparison. Yeah, Sarah and I were at a presentation by Rocky Mountain Power where we have, I think, pretty good data on what, where they are and what they're doing as well. I think that would be interesting to know because I, I like to make decisions based on good facts myself. Uh, what do you think would be a, a good next step? Maybe meeting with Jamie is something we can do. Um, maybe thinking about if what the other options are, right, if they exist. Um, we also don't want to come across as too pushy on this, um, but we well, just want to make this is sure what I would say. We consider you advisory. We also consider you the experts. So give us your best information and help us make the best decision. Um, obviously we have final say, but like I said, I'm not an expert in this field and I will, I rely on people like you and Sarah and Darren to give me the best thinking. And I think we also need to understand that this is our future exactly how quickly we get there, I'm not sure, but this this is, our children are gonna have, you know, renewals are gonna be just normal for them. Uh, thanks for that feedback, Sarah. Um, I have been playing with, and I'll see if I can share my screen. Um, I was gonna see if we might be able to put together a short survey, because I know that there were questions about how interested really are Orem residents and business owners in this um, program? And so this is my first draft of, uh, again, I, I was interested in having a short survey um, and perhaps, you know, we uh, approach people during Summerfest while they're standing in line with nothing else to do but answer three questions. Um, that could be, um, a possible way to get a lot more data than we had before um, and more up-to-date data if you know if everybody would available um, uh, associated with the committee were interested in 
collecting some data. So um, <clears throat> the first question is, my preference is to stay with the original Rocky Mountain Power default 2040 target. Um, so the introduction, again, I tried to stay as neutral as possible, just explaining what it is. So ORM residents and businesses get electricity through Rocky Mountain Power. Rocky Mountain Power plans to phase out coal and add more renewable sources by 2040. The Utah State Legislature passed a bill that would allow cities to enter into an agreement with Rocky Mountain Power to transition to 100% renewable ener energy sources 10 years earlier by 2030. The program is called the Community Renewable Energy Program. So the first question is, my preference is to stay with the default, which is the 2040 target, or to accelerate the move to renewable energy sources 2030 target. Second question, the Community Renewable Energy Program, the accelerated target, would be an opt-out program. If enrolled, would you likely stay enrolled or opt out? And then the various questions, I combined two questions before. Um, and so again, gauging what the likelihood is that they would stay with the program and their interest level on any potential increased cost. Um, and then just the third question is um, really trying to make sure that we're, we're getting, and if we were to do this, we would ask people ahead of time before they take the survey, are you an ORM resident? If you're not, then move on to find another ORM resident or business owner. Um, so I welcome your thoughts on this strategy to get some data from the residents that we could then, you know, again, further inform us as we move on. Um, I love getting more data. Yeah. Uh, one, one question I have is, and maybe this is for you, Debbie, um, is what would it take for us to get these questions in, in our Orem City survey when it goes out? I think we'd get a, a larger participation rate and it'd be a little bit more randomized. Yeah, we, we usually do things with Y2K analytics. Um, many of you know Quinn Monson, he does a lot of city surveys. I think we do those periodically. I'm not sure what the timetable is, but I think um, this might be a good starting point, but I think it does need a little bit more comprehensive and um, and it usually goes to a couple thousand. I think we have 2,000 utility emails and we usually get pretty good response. So I think um, this would be good maybe for Summerfest, but I think you really should follow it with a more extensive um, survey. Um, I'm thinking Bren or Stephen Downs at the city administration are the ones who, who coordinate that. And I don't know exactly in who does the surveys, but if you call the, the mayor's office or Jamie's office, you'll get, you can ask about that. But yeah, I think uh, we do those periodically. I think they're a good way to survey our, our, and it would be much more extensive, but this sounds like a good way to start, but do an extensive one later. Maybe we could use Summerfest as a pilot, Sarah, where we, we learn what questions we should be asking <laughs> um, or see where people are confused. Um, that might be useful. The nice thing about Quinn is he does help you craft appropriately statistically significant questions. He's very good about taking out biases and it might be worth a, a call to Quinn Monson. I'm familiar with Quinn, he's my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, in, in, a, in, a, in a very good way, just because our names are often confused. Yes, um, that's a thank you, uh, Sarah. Uh, um, I love the idea of getting some data on this as well, and would love to see it on an Orem City survey. Um, uh, uh, so. Uh, we don't have any idea when that, this is a once a year survey that we might send out. Do you know anything about it? I, I, I missed that. Um, we do them periodically. I don't know if it's once a year. Okay. We've done them on arts, we've done it on parks, we've done them on you know various things. Um, we also do overall city ones. Are you happy? What do you want to improve? So we, it's just gonna have to take a call to the city. I, I, can, I, can, I can make a call if you want me to follow up. Do you know who the decider is? Say again. Who is the decider on the survey? Um, probably the city and admin with direction from the council if there's some sort of idea or something that we want to, we like to survey because we feel like it gives us a little more, um, well, it helps us make decisions. We say, you know, so many people want this, so we're going to work on this. So it it's, helps us make decisions. 
Um, I know we we recently just did one. I think it was on arts. So we we can definitely get on the rotation and probably on city council, it would help us make a decision because if there's really no interest, it doesn't make sense. If there is interest, then it makes sense to move ahead. So that's that's probably something we need to do sooner than later. Do you want me to reach out to like Steven or something? Yeah, call Steven because he'll know who's okay. who's doing it and when. But I will um, obviously, yeah, Darren and Quinn and other Quinn. <laughs> Uh, to work to try to refine um, the survey and get it the best information we can. Yeah, and it's it's very easy for for me to work with Quinn or okay. you know, he's he's a, a good colleague of mine. So. Um, so. As a geographer, I always want to see like spatial stuff. So you could add zip code, and you could see what places are overrepresented and. That's always a nice way to find like good data too. Um, I, I'd also I'd also want to know about age because I really think the younger people are going to be much more apt for this, whereas it may be harder sell to our seniors. Great, thank you. So I understood that Sarah, you would be calling Steve uh, uh, to learn a little bit more, but we will. Could you circulate that those questions as well, Sarah? Yeah, I can. I can just I can just do an initial. Hey, this is kind of what we're thinking. What would be the process? So I yeah. can. Do that. Yeah, and I'll share the link around. And it's and 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 you know I I think the fact that the city council was interested enough to put it on the work agenda a meeting agenda and that they were interested enough to engage the discussion well suggests that it's worthy of a question perhaps um, so so thank you for taking that initiative Sarah uh, and, and speaking of cool surveys Hillary is doing a cool water survey is that still on Hillary and coming up soon oh it's on. We um, just ordered iPads so we can go out and collect data. And yeah, I just um, I'm kind of using a stratified random sampling, choosing targeted census block groups like based on demographic factors. And it's perfect timing because we're in such a drought. It's all about um, kind of barriers to converting landscapes to low water landscapes. I think I'm really excited. I have um, four students who are gonna help do surveys in May. Yeah, we'll see how many we can get. So so, th so that's awesome, Hillary, and that's really good data, right? Yeah. So you're gonna do this systematically and randomly mm -hmm. and, and that kind of stuff. And so you will have really good data on water interest and use and knowledge and things <laughs> like that. Hopefully. I've looked at Hillary's questions. They're, they're extensive and they're really excellent. Um, I, I suppose we wouldn't, I mean, just throwing, I just brainstorming. We wouldn't want to throw a Sarah question about um, electricity and renewables on there. Would that muddy the survey too much, or would that be one question too many? Well, you know how surveys work with universities. You have to like get them approved, you know, right. by the mm -hmm. like ethical review board, and they've already approved it. I mean, if I, I mean, I'm open to that if th people think that's a good idea, but it might like take a little bit of time to get those questions <laughs> approved. Yeah. I'm, I, but hey, I'm, we can do another. Yeah. I'm always hesitant to rock the boat for sure on those, right? Once I get approval, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not even going to think about the IRB again. You know, yeah. It is kind of interesting to see if people who are you know, I'm doing some interviews with people who have already adopted zero escape landscaping like you, Darren, we're gonna interview you. And maybe I can squeeze in a question about, oh, how are you about, do you think, do you connect this to other environmental things like renewable energy and stuff? So mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out what has made people who've already started zero escaping, what's been that push? I'm really excited about the summer project, super exciting. I would love for you to randomly interview me with my giant lawn and try to <laughs> help me think about why I still have a giant lawn. 
Well, give me your address and I can see how that census <laughs> block group fits in. <laughs> That's that's awesome, Hillary. I please, uh, even though it's not kind of one of our official projects, I I hope that you will kind of consider us as a an outlet for your information and to share with us. And yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, well, I'm hoping to have a report by the end of the summer to share with the city. And yeah, I'm really excited. I I reached out to Darren last week about um, the new rec center. I was like, oh, maybe they're gonna zero escape because I saw. I've been going there for the past few weeks and I saw all this dirt. And then one day I went and I saw grass. I was like, oh man, but that's okay. We have, we have lots of opportunities to do good things. Right. So, so let's use that as a segue actually to the next thing, which is recognizing green businesses. So Orem City, I'm sorry, I don't mean to leave us behind too early, but I am cognizant that Sam is sitting here waiting for us. So we, we can also return to a little bit more what we were just talking about, but I was sensing we're in pretty good shape on that, Sarah, Quinn, everybody. Okay. Uh, so let's give Sam a moment uh, because uh, one of the things we want to do is recognize green businesses. And it sounds like from Hillary's report, uh, we would not be able to recognize the city of Orem, sadly. Uh, if we wanted to. <laughs> uh, maybe they're doing other sustainability things, but uh, th 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 I, I'm sorry, th th that sounded very critical, I'm sure. But, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, we, we probably could do better at some of this stuff in the city, and we need to talk about that. Uh, but uh, uh, Sam, why don't you help update us on uh, uh, on, on what you've found by way of nominations for local businesses who seem to be uh, green. Can I out myself really quick? I have a giant yard too. I have one of these like <laughs> old brick houses that has like this huge yard. I'm always like, what do I do with this thing? So like, I'm no better than anybody else. So, so it, it sounds like uh, many of us would not win an award and, uh, and, 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 uh, and the city may be in the same boat at times. Uh, so let's see, yes, we all want to do better. And one way to do better is to recognize people who are doing better to help inspire us. So uh, Sam, we got anybody to inspire us? <laughs> yeah, so um, I mean, there, yeah, there was a little bit of uh, not as much of a response rate that I thought, but um, I will share my screen. I've these are some of the responses that I got from the survey that we sent out and that closed um, on Earth Day, so April 22nd. So um, yeah, there were only three responses <laughs> and one of the responses, um, uh, they, they put down an address in Orem, but then I looked online just to kind of like find out a little bit more about their company and found that the business address was in Lehigh. So I don't, um, I don't know if we'll be able to uh, accept or consider that option but um uh we can go through this or um i also um shared the folder with you darren and also quinn and then you could share that to everyone else and they could look over it whichever you think is best <clears throat> i think it would be worth taking a few minutes to talk about our three nominations and uh okay. so i would be interested in your your perspective on the strength of the responses. I, I know that we want to have conversations with them, so this was just an opportunity for us to follow up with them. Um, but uh, for Qualify, right, we just need to get more information about where their business is physically located. Yeah, so um, we can go over the first one. Um, this was a like a financial services company, but they're based in Lehigh, and they didn't really one of the, they only left like a little bit of a description of what they're doing to sustainably reduce energy consumption. Um, and they basically just stated that they're providing access to financing for sustainable energy products, solar power to homeowners throughout the United States. And so um, that was pretty much the extent of what they left. Um, and then I wasn't sure if um, RC Willie, I mean, like it's, the address is in Orem, but it's kind of like a Western states business. So I wasn't sure if that was something that no, they would, they would qualify. Definitely. Okay. The anchor at the mall. Okay. 
Yeah, and they had really good responses. Um, so they left uh, a lot of responses about reducing energy. Uh, and then it also talked about like inact like when the lights turn off after inactivity. Um, and then they they went into like reduced water consumption right here. Um, and so they had they had a, a lot of information. I don't really know if you want me to go through all of it, but um, this was definitely like a really strong response that could be followed up on. And then the last one that I thought was interesting that I didn't I hadn't heard of this business was Uncle Sam's Army Navy Outdoor. Um, and so they're, yeah, they're based in Orem and it's a smaller business. And uh, they, I mean, some of the responses were kind of based on sustainability and then some of them were not really, I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of going in a different direction, but, uh, but one, one of the main things that they talked about was completing solar for many years and then also having drip systems. And then I guess they also talked about, um, uh, we offer trade for store credit that recycles clothing and equipment. Um, so yeah, those were the three responses. And um, if, I mean, we can go into any of these different sections if you'd wanna focus on any of them, but um, that was kind of the, a little summary of the responses, so. I, I, I'm impressed with the, uh, well, especially the second and third one. I, I, uh, I mean, that's, that's really nice to know that RC Willie is doing all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I was glancing at it as you were telling us about it and I was uh, uh, quite impressed and uh, and and this Army Navy store too. I mean, that's that's impressive. Um, it's certainly a drip system, and certainly solar, and um, uh, and you know, helping the community while being sustainable. I I like both of these. I think you could give a like a big business and a smaller business award, and I think they could both win some sort of plaque or recognition. We'd be happy to recognize them at city council. Awesome, yeah. Um, and yeah, they all put down like their contact information and they would be willing to talk more extensively about that. So um, just for following up purposes, yeah. But yeah, I thought the same thing. They're both, they both seem to have pretty strong responses and kind of, yeah, Darren, were you about to say something? Oh, no, no. I was just going to also mention um, that uh, um, I think that once this kind of gets off the ground, that we'll get more uh, applications in the future. So I'm not totally dis disappointed by two. <laughs> it, it, it makes the selection easier, and and uh, is and I I think that we are building a foundation here. Yeah, I think so too. And um, I kind of I had a question about the funding. Um, I know I mentioned this to you briefly in an email, but um, Vivint Smart Home, they offered to give $250 of a donation for this project. And so I'm wondering if we would still just want to accept all of that. I, I haven't gotten back to his secretary yet. If we'd want to accept all of that, even though we might have a few less awards to hand out. And then also, yeah, that was pretty much my main question regarding that. Accept it and just get good receipts. That's what I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> De Debbie, where do we accept it? It would have to come through financial, um, through Brandon, uh, Brandon, our CPA, our director of that. So we would just send the money to the city and then have it earmarked for this committee and the awards. And then it's pretty easy. You just, um, we add it to the budget and then you just, I don't know if you're going to use it to give them a gift card or a plaque. If you know what the 250 would be used for. We're going to do plaques, I think, to start. Okay. And then what you would do is just get a bid and a receipt and, this, and then have the city pay that, that bill for the plaques. And then we could certainly give them um, some kudos from the city. Pete Woldsley does the, the um, social media and he could give them, you know, a write-up 
Um, too bad it didn't happen on Earth Day. That would have been a really good thing. But there's another time that it would be a good time to give um, a shout out to these businesses and talk why they why they um, are getting the award. And then also to Vivint for providing the, the funding. Uh, Debbie, in chat, would you be willing to share the name that Sam can use as a contact for, for Vivint when they provide the donation? She might be muted. I sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll type something in the in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and that's basically. Oh, yeah. Darren, were you about to? Are others on the committee okay with this approach? Uh, I, I I spoke out. It seems like Quinn is as well. Uh, Paul and Sarah and uh, let's see, is Hillary still with us? Oh yeah, Hillary. Uh, Hillary's been replaced by a picture of a dog. But um, are, are you uh, fine with um, uh, kind of recognizing these two businesses, like Debbie suggested, a, a large business and a small business, and um, citing their efforts and uh, providing a plaque? Yeah, I think I think it's a great idea. Um, I, I I think they both are deserving, and like Darren says, I think that this basically lays the foundation of the first year. And then it gets advertised and people will hear about it. And maybe R.C. Willie would want to be, you know, recipient for two years running and, you know, I think things like that. So I, I think it, it's a good start to something great. I would just say that before, before we decide on these two businesses, that I, I would like to have conversations with them to understand a little bit more. Um, I, I'm hesitant to give an award solely based on these responses, but uh, I think that both of those businesses look promising to me to have conversations with. And then maybe maybe next month in our meeting, um, I could report on that conversation and make a recommendation uh, with a little bit more information if that's okay with you guys. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think. And awesome. And I, I, I've shared basically all the documents, like the contact information of people that helped throughout the project. Um, and just like the survey, I think I shared that with you, Quinn. I wasn't able to share it with you, Darren, just, I don't know, something with Qualtrics and like collaborating surveys, you have to be within like the member organization. But anyways, um, all of that, I guess, could just be shared to the committee, the folder, the Google Docs folder, everything. But um, yeah, and I just wanted to thank everyone for the help, whether that be um, guiding me throughout the project or with advertisements, social media advertisements or putting me in contact with the right people. Um, it's definitely a group project. So thank you. So Sam, um, it, uh, you and I've talked about this, but I just wanted to make sure everyone else was aware that Sam's semester has ended. And so his, his uh, service with us is coming to an end. And I just wanted to say thank you for donating your time and your energy and your ideas uh, with us. And uh, thank you for passing on all of, all of your contacts and, uh, and information. But what I can say for sure, knowing what I've been doing in the past two months is that uh, we've made more progress on this because you're on our team. And that's a wonderful thing. So thank you for your efforts there, Sam. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for all the support. <laughs> Excellent. We appreciate that. And uh, uh, Quinn, if you need help when contacting those businesses, I'm happy to be to do so. But I, I also feel like you would just do fine on your own, um, contacting them and talking with them. Um, maybe we we don't need more uh, more people involved in that in that phase. But if you if you'd like somebody, I'm I'm happy to, or I'm sure another committee member would be happy to as well. But I, I, I think is there anyone else that would be interested in, in, in being invited to that conversation? If so, let me know, okay? I mean, I, I think that it, this is also just a bridge building exercise, right? We, we have not um, known or understood people in the business community very much at all. And so, you know, building those ties and creating those bridges sounds um, like a uh, 
a, a really important thing to do. Um, now, uh, uh, as, as Hillary pointed out, um, uh, um, yes, uh, I agree. Thank you, Sarah, in the chat. Great step forward. Yeah, I agree. This, is a, this has been a fabulous project. And let me add my thanks to those of, of Quinn, uh, Sam, for your work here. Uh, it's so nice to see this uh, actually get carried out. Uh, you know, there's lots of there's lots of little details, and and you've and the first time through is hardest, and you've shown us the way. So we really appreciate it. Um, uh, and as Hillary pointed out, uh, there might there might be some room for improvement in the city on things like this. Uh, 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 Let's say that in the future, we wanted to encourage uh, some zero escaping instead of just more uh, lawn. Uh, Matt, uh, uh, who, who might, how might, what might be the best way forward to sort of encourage the city to think about, uh, I mean, I'm sure the city does many things uh, and I know they do, uh, uh, you know, to, to help with this kind of thing, but but there are some visible things from time to time, like maybe doing a little bit more xeriscaping, a little less sod. Uh, who might we be able to talk to about um, uh, that sort of priority? Yeah, so one, I would say uh, a good example of doing a little more xeriscaping is the landscaping with the new library edition. You'll see a lot of uh, drought tolerant bushes and roses and um, yeah, a lot of a lot of drip irrigation. So, I mean, um, there's a sustainability project that the Orange City could be uh, recognized for. Uh, as far as doing more projects, um, I think it's uh, maybe a discussion for next month with, the, uh, with this Park and Rec's master plan. It's a question for um, management of how more of these landscaping practices are incorporated into um, our master planning. Can I also add something? Um, Ryan Clark was the city's liaison with both the fitness center and the library. He is someone that you want to um, connect with and also just raise the awareness or give suggestions because he's the person that's actually liaisoning, liaison, whatever that word is, the liaison for. Um, and if you, someone like him who you'd say, you know, Ryan, what about zero scaping? What about this? What about that? He's the person that would actually see that that through. So um, you guys should talk to Ryan um, or the city administration as a kind of a, an initiative to kind of work that into these. We're going to eventually build a new city, city hall. It may not be for a few years, but that really should be part of the plan is making that more, you know, more sustainable, less, less reliant on water. So Thank, thank you, Debbie and Matt. I really appreciate those. Uh, and um, we, we would, I mean, uh, when we talk to Ryan, um, I think that would be great to say thank you for the, I will, I will check that out, the, the, the landscaping of the library edition. Uh, we should definitely express our thanks uh, for that. Uh, oh, and that's a good idea, Hillary, on the chat to highlight the library landscaping. So, so Sarah, maybe maybe we could do that as social media. That's a that's a that's a fabulous idea, uh, a kind of recognition of of, of that. Um, I, I love that, that happen. So, thank you, Matt, for helping make us aware of that. Um, that actually segues nicely into our fourth one, which is social media media and Earth Day art contest. Uh, so, Sarah. Okay, I will share my screen again. Um, yeah, there we go. I apologize. Um, I actually just gave the um, gift card to the winner just before this meeting. And um, it was actually original piece inspired by the, the, um, the, the contest, which was nice. Um, Cause sometimes I anticipate that some artists select something that would fit the theme of the, um, 
of the contest from among their existing pieces, but she actually um, created this new specifically for this um, art contest. So that was encouraging uh, to see that. So 10th grader Callie Michaelis um, and uh, in her artist statement, she mentioned um, wanting to create this image of the young deer next to the young tree and the older deer next to the larger mature tree and kind of combining youth, uh, like all ages and um, kind of tending to, to everyone on the planet that shares the planet. So um, I appreciated that. And then um, our, we had our, finally, I got our first of our water feature series up. It's been frustrating me, but that's fine, whatever. But it went up yesterday and we already have our first submission of um, another resident. The first one featured was Darren's yard. And, um, and now we have a new submission that has come in. So I'm encouraged by that. So if you have yards, not you Quinn, obviously, um, <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody else has a yard or has a neighbor or somebody's house that you pass by regularly and you've always wanted to learn more about what their story was on their, um, you know, water-wise landscaping, this would be a great time to feature them. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing now. Thank, thank you, Sarah. And maybe you see Debbie's comment in the chat that maybe we could even recognize this at a city council meeting. Um, I think we did a little something on social media with this, right, already? We did, um, again, we featured your yard. Oh, but, no, I mean the- Oh, are I you mean, talking we, about- I'm talking about the art winner. Oh, the art winner. Yes, we normally share um, during our annual report to the, to the council. Okay. Um, we share about the, the winner and the winning piece. So, yeah, did I, we... think, I, I think you could do more than that. I think that's outstanding. I mean, I, I love the youth and the things they're doing. So let's. Yeah. So she, um, I heard again. It was, it was shared on the city's social media pages. Um, oh, okay. Good. Facebook and Instagram. And it was also, um, we created a digital billboard for the billboards at University Place. And that ran for a week, um, the week after Earth day um that was included in the mix there so oh it's and, outstanding let's use that again over and over and, and she got a, a gift card and it was funny because both last year's recipient and this year's recipient chose michael's as their where they would like to spend their gift card so they're just going to reinvest in their art <laughs> that's that's awesome Thank you, Sarah. That's really good work. You always do such good work on social media. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, and uh, I, I believe we've reached the end. Uh, we're a little quicker today, in part because we had our guest uh, who couldn't make it. Um, but uh, are, are there any, uh, have I neglected anything that was on our agenda? Uh, Darren, this wasn't on the agenda, but I was just thinking about it in relation to our, our discussion of water, uh, uh, escaping and things like that. Um, I know that, there, so there's that uh, website, utahwatersavers.com that, that talks about, you know, toilet rebates and things like that. If you have old, you know, th those sorts of things, is it something that we could advertise to people um, to make them more aware of it. I'm not sure that everybody is aware of some of the, the rebates and, and different uh, cost saving things that, that they do actually have access to. Um, some of them statewide. A lot of them are just Salt Lake County, but some of them are statewide. I, I included um, a link to slowtheflow.org, I think, in the, um, the social media post. But if there's another link 
that goes directly to, and I think that there's something in that page that directs you to rebates. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's another link that you'd like me to include as we share each one saying, hey, look, this is an example. And if you want to learn more and if you, you know, here are your resources. So um, if you have a favorite link that you'd like me to add to that, let me know. Okay. Yeah. And they, I don't know if they've got it up this year, but they used to have like a lawn watering guide to like how many irrigations this week sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 there are a lot of resources out there on wise water use. And I would love, um, I, I think that maybe we ought to, you know, um, regularly link <laughs> to um, uh, various um, information and rebates and things like that on wise water use. So, uh, um, and, and, and maybe even, maybe, uh, I love the idea, Sarah, that you're doing of uh, featuring people. Um, and thank you for featuring our lawn, our yard. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of it. <laughs> And, um, and uh, so I love that, of course. Uh, for Sarah, does the beautification have a sign to go put in their yard? As like, you know, best you know, yard of the month? Because I think if they don't, you should coordinate with beautification and get a sign made. Because uh, there's some bragging rights related to those signs, right? People yeah. see them and they're there for a month and we take pictures, but I think beautification with a, with the wise water resource would also be good. You can, I don't know, I'd tell you to reach out to beautification and dovetail them. That's a really good idea. Uh, does anybody know anybody there? <laughs> I can reach out. Is Reed still the, um, the staffer assigned to that committee? You know, it changes every year, and I used to be okay. on it. I don't know who's in charge, but um, yeah, if you call Reed, he'll know. Okay. Yeah, that's that's an ex excellent idea. Excellent idea. And I saw Hillary on the chat loved it too. Um, but we could also have, right, we could also, if, if you're ever sort of having trouble finding a yard, uh, Sarah, uh, a week dedicated to just a couple of resources. I don't know what the... What the picture would look like but um yeah okay uh great ideas paul thank you and hillary uh for chiming in and and uh debbie uh, anything else okay i just want to say thank you you guys are great you're doing great things keep just keep educating people keep educating the council we you just this is a a slow but steady process to get us to start thinking water-wise and renewables. It, it takes a while to, to just you know, raise it to our conscious level. Thank you, Debbie. And we really appreciate your support. You've been super supportive. And yeah, I feel like the committee, we've really got a lot of uh, good things going on. So I uh, really appreciate everybody's, uh, and, and there are a lot of independent efforts out there. So, um, and, and, and Paul, I'd forgotten earlier that you are a biker, right? You, you bike. Uh, and when we were talking about that earlier, so maybe. Um, it... a amateur, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like to ride to, I like to ride to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome. So you, yeah, you're a good source for this uh, bike trails thing too. So anyway, um, Okay, so let's, uh, yep, yeah, we, we need to wrap up. Uh, I probably need to, to approve the minutes uh, before we lose more committee people. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from last month? I move to approve the minutes. Thank you, Paul. I will second it and uh, everybody in favor, raise your hand or say aye, okay. We have approved the minutes from last month, which were circulated with this month's agenda. Uh, and um, let's see, Matt, is there anything else we need to do or is it okay to adjourn? I think we're ready. Okay. Uh, I, um, 
uh, I am just, I have too much of an efficiency bone in my body. So I will move adjournment instead of asking for such a motion. <laughs> All right, good Good second. Okay, everyone in favor? Aye. Okay, we'll use that. We'll use the I as a as a wave off. See you. <laughs> bye bye.